Okay, so I've got my floor plan set up in my new drawing set up to draw my section and now I want to draw the first section uh, or at least set it out and so it can be handy then to have the layers from my other file because we probably want to use the same layers now so I'm going to show you a little trick that you can use to import layers uh, without using Design Center or anything like that. If you use Design Center, if you know about that, you can, there are tricks you can use there. But I'm going to show you a really simple one. Just go to use the method I mentioned in the last video. Insert, insert again. Browse and find the file that you want the layers from. Okay, so I'm just going to... Ah, so it's only an external reference, so that's a bit painful. Uh, so let's just do it in a different way. Okay, so... Uh, I have to show you another... Well, okay, let's just make it... Do it... Anyway, so it's not letting me insert the, uh, the file because I've already done an external reference. So what I'm going to do is just do a save as and save this file temporarily. This might seem like a bit of a strange one, but it's worth it. Um, Okay, so I've just made a temporary copy of this file. And uh, I don't want to show you too many tricks. So, okay, I'm going to close that file now and then go back to the original because I want to keep working in that. Okay, so I just did it so that I can get the insert tool to work. Going to browse now, I can bring in this temporary file I've saved. And I don't care where I place it, just anywhere. It's off to the side. Now I'm going to delete it. But then if I go and have a look at my list of layers, notice how I've got all the layers from my other file. So it's just a bit of a shortcut to save you typing in all those layer names again because we should be able to use most of the same layer names uh, as we draw the section. You could always make the layers again if that isn't working for you. Um, so then the other thing I want to show you before I start drawing, uh, make sure you know about this option to rotate the view, which can be useful uh, when you're doing other things. I'm going to show you a way that is even better than that, but uh, again, it's important that you know about that option there. And so then, <coughs> what I'm going to do now though is switch to my correct layers as I start drawing and go to my masonry wall layer. Uh, and oh, now also, so I'm going to draw a, um, a line that will go into my section layer eventually, but for now I'll just leave it on this current layer. So it's really important that you nominate where your section is projected from. And you can take the section from anywhere you like really, it's up to you. But what I see a lot of students especially doing is trying to take the section from the easiest place to draw. In other words, a place where you don't have very much. So some might go, well, if I take the section from here, then I don't need to draw the column, I don't need to draw the door, and that's less work for me. But it's actually creating more work because it's helpful to know those things. You want to know the height of the door and you want to know the, what the column looks like in elevation. It will just help you when you're doing your other drawings. So I'm going to move the section line down here so it projects through the door and then we'll pick up these other things as well. Okay, so I've got that section line. I'll make that look more presentable afterwards. But then I can start drawing um, my section above. So I'm going to just draw a line from where the this line here would intersect, not with the door, but with the wall. Because remember, you're going to have the wall above. In this case, not very much, but we'll have uh, we'll have something, and we'll go out and have a look at it in a minute. But uh, I'd say there's definitely brickwork inside the um, the bulkhead we've got here. So again I'm just going to draw a line 
going up and make sure it's vertical. And then I'll draw another one. You could if you really want to draw from the intersection of this line and your section line, but this point here is going to be the same basically, so that's fine. And I'll take it up. And now I want a line on my... Uh, we'll start on the concrete layer. So I've got a column concrete layer. Uh, I don't actually have a... Um, oops, sorry. That's in my uh, XREF, so watch out for that actually, I should show you this. You've got layers from the external reference that'll have the layer name before the... Uh, sorry, the file name before the layer name. And that's what I chose by mistake, so EDI project uh, con detailing is the name of my file, and then I've got a column concrete. This file here is the um, the layer that's part of this file, without the file name in front of it. So I've selected that just so I can go to layer properties, and I'm going to make a new layer that has the same properties but is um, going to have a different name. So it's going to be a floor concrete. And uh, like I said, it can have exactly the same properties. And so I'll make it the current layer. And I'm just going to draw a line across, straight across, to nominate my floor level. Then I've got the, uh, the what is it, the brick sill basically over here. So that's again on the wall masonry layer. So I'm going to draw a line from that intersection between my section line and the wall. And then coming up just above. And then another line uh, on the inside. So that'll be the inside of the sill there. So it'll be brick either side. And remember, you've got to think about what's above and below. So I can see the window there in plan, but you need to be thinking about what's below the window. So I'll have the brick there first and then the window will be above that. Uh, so now we've got the ceiling uh, we know is 2910 above the floor. So I'm going to offset 2910 from this line here that's my floor level and then click above. Um, now I know this is getting picky, but is that line I've drawn for the concrete at the right height, do you think? Or is there anything else that is going to be raising the floor level above the concrete slab that you're all standing on? Carpet. The carpet, exactly. You do need to show that. So the carpet and there'd be some sort of underlay, probably not a lot here, but there would be something. So. Let's just keep it simple and, and make that 10 mil. And uh, yeah, so, so I'll just make it that for now. So I'm going to offset 10 mil from here down. Okay, so zooming in there, you can see then we've got this line that will be the carpet, so we'll need a layer for that. And the line weight for it should probably be lighter than the structural layer. So otherwise I'll just read as one line. So I'm going to make, try and make it say 0.25. Hopefully that'll still read as a cut line. So with the line weights on, you get some idea, see if I zoom out, it's going to disappear, that line. Okay, so maybe then looking at our photos for the exterior will help with the next bit.
All right, so is there anything there that you think might give you the floor level? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That concrete slab there should be our floor. Sometimes it will step down, but in this case, we can maybe at first even um, just assume that it's the floor at least, and then we'll see here. It probably isn't actually, because it probably does step. You can see over there projecting across. Uh, maybe. We'll have a look. Could just be a continuous slab. So, uh, yes, yeah, so let's just assume that's the floor level. Do you th can you think of any ways you can check that? Yeah, the step, that's actually that's what we're going to get to next. Definitely that'll help a lot with things later. But there's something you can see here that will let you work that out perfectly. Exactly, the bricks. Count the bricks. So you've got here a perfect measuring rod. You've got those bricks on the outside. And you can work out the height to the sill. And then you can measure the sill inside the room here and then work out if this truly is the top of your floor. It probably is, but that's something you'll need to check. So we'll maybe even check that in a minute. Um, so for now, though, we'll just assume that is the true floor level. And so using just fill it, maybe. I'll join those lines together and then trim. So where's the brickwork going to stop? This line or this line? The blue or the green? The green. Exactly, the green, that's right. So the green's the concrete, so the bricks will stop there. And then the carpet will go up to the brickwork exactly and sit inside it. So it's spot on. So, so again here, looking at this image, you can work out the size of the turn down of the slab. Now you'll have to go underneath to work out how far it comes up if you go down below. Um, then you can work out the size of the beam that runs along the edge there to get your slab thickness. But I'm just going to assume it's about half. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bricks there. So 595, let's say 600, because they're a little bit more than 85, but um, a little bit less than 86. It's always a funny thing with your brick heights. But uh, yeah, so 600 should do. And uh, again, you can double check that. So going back to here, so I can offset down 600. And then Uh, I'll just maybe draw a line. From the corner. And then offset 450 across. Again, that's something you can check when you go down below. It doesn't need to be perfect, but try and get it uh, a bit closer than that. And then I'll just make it 300 for now. And again, you can check that. So just join these together, something like that. Over here, the, uh, the bricks are going to stop. Well, we've got the door there, but for now I'll just draw the bricks stopping at the, uh, at the floor. And then the, the floor will continue beyond that. Uh, so then what's happening above? What do you think is happening up in the ceiling? Yeah, it'll be similar, yep, so, but notice how they don't have the slab there um, projecting into this wall in the same way, so that's a little bit different, but you do have the, um, the edge of the slab there, yep, which is probably the same as you have here, so that is probably your floor level on the story above. So that's one thing you can check and you can try and work out which bricks that lines up with over here, it's probably that one. Yep. Yep. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah, 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 that's right. So that's the bottom of the beam. But then, do you think that's the side thickness? No, definitely not. So, so there would be a beam running along the edge, and then the slab wouldn't be as, as thick as that. No, no, no any. So, so that's very thick. That's, uh, or let's just... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. These would be framed around the beams. Yeah, that's right. So the beams would be a little bit smaller, but yeah, but that's that's their basic location. So, yeah, so that's right. So it would come into the room a little bit over here, uh, but then otherwise it's much less than that. And that's your ceiling um, inside those beams. So you've got to think about those things, especially for interiors, because that's where you get your services and your other interior fittings. And... Um, Okay, so here we can work it out roughly. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rises, or seven courses. So seven times 85. Again, sorry, that's the same. So 595, so same as the one below. And um, then you've even measured the, um, the bulkhead so we can get a better idea uh, with the, uh, the measurements you've taken, but I'll show you another way of double checking them in a minute. So, so again, just offsetting, well, it's, it's not quite 600, but uh, let's see if we can see, it's a shame the windows are all shut. Yeah, let's just do it 600 for now and we'll double check that afterwards. And then you've measured the bulkhead size as... Uh, Oh no, sorry, that's to this side. I've gone, that's wrong. So we're going to work out how far it comes down as well. So what measurement have you taken there? I'll use yours. Okay, so 1110 plus 1432, 2542. Let's just make it 2540. So that should be to the bottom of the bulkhead. And then we'll say it comes in, okay, we'll just make it 450 for now. You'll need to check this. No, oh, so not column concrete, floor concrete. Oops. Okay, so that then tells us where the brickwork's going to stop. And then the window will sit in there as well. And you'd have another line coming up here. And so from this line, I can now offset 600 above to get the height of the floor level above. But again, we'll double check that using a couple of different methods. That gives some indication. But now I'm just going to check this distance because there's one thing here you've got to really be careful of. And the... Um, the facilities people here actually had some issues with this because they didn't know how to work out the thickness of the slab and uh, and they dug a hole through the ceiling to do that, to work it out, because they just, well, I mean, that's, it's, it's actually the best method in the end. If, you, if you're not sure, you can take things away, take away the lining and, and actually measure what's there. But uh, what, what they could have done, um, and I was sort of discussing this with them, uh, is have a look around and see if they could find the slab exposed anywhere. And it is exposed just outside the room here, uh, in a place you just mentioned, in the fire stairs. You can see the slab edge quite clearly there. And yes, that's right. And you can work it out precisely that way and assume that the floor in the rooms is, is very similar to that. So, uh, yeah. That's what they could have done. But in the end, they still had to do some, some work in there anyway, so it wasn't a total disaster. But, uh, but yeah, there was a big hole in the ceiling here at one point while they were just trying to work that out. 
Um, so, and that's that's often what what people end up doing if they're not sure, and you sometimes just have to. So, uh, okay, so two twenty is what I've got left there. The the slab could be much less than that for a um, upper level slab if it's not spanning a great distance. And would you have an idea roughly what the span is by now? You probably have some idea. What's the span of the slab here? And these are things you've got to think about for the structure. Well, that's the long way. That's yeah. That's oh yeah. So yeah. Yeah. So that's that's right. Yeah. So that way. Yeah. So yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That way. Yeah. Don't worry about that direction. It's only the the, the shortest direction is the the span that you need to um, have a structure for. So uh, yeah. So you can have that short distance with the um, the thickness required to span that that dimension extend infinitely in either direction. So it's only the short distance you need to do. Yeah, yeah. Well, you've got, so you've got something holding your, your structure at either end. Uh, say it's a three metre span, and you're required to then have, for example, it won't be this thick, but say you need a 150 um, beam or whatever to span between your two points that are three metres apart. And so you could extend that infinitely in either direction and span still the three metres between those two points. So you don't, it doesn't matter how long it is, as long as you've got the short distance um, spanning um, or you know accounted for um, structurally. Yeah, so we could have this room, so that's the short distance, that could extend you know forever in either direction, in theory, because we could just have joists or whatever thing is supporting it extending as far as we need it to. So, uh, so again here, 220, I know from experience, that is more than what you'd need to span this distance. So, like I said, do you know what the distance... Hopefully these are things, measurements you're getting used to working with to work out your designs. I'll just measure it for you though, in case you're not remembering. Okay, so to there is... Well, it's actually a fairly, fairly decent span, 5 metres, nearly. So, uh, it'd actually be more than a lot of slabs where the structure will be broken up even more. Uh, but uh, like I said, 220 is uh, is more than enough, and it's probably more like 150. Okay, so I'm going to offset down 150, and I'll let you go and measure it and tell me exactly what it is. So I'll just fill up these together. So that space there is the amount of room you have for your ceiling structure and your services. So you can see we don't have wires and other things exposed in the um, ceiling here, which means they must be recessed, and they're not chased into the slab, so they haven't cut grooves into the slab to, uh, to conceal those. They've obviously got it concealed behind something. So even with that going and tapping on that ceiling, we know it's a um, plasterboard ceiling. And uh, so you can just tell that visually, all these services and other things are projecting. So you can have slabs with the um, services uh, cut into them or uh, they can even account for that in advance. So that's a possibility but we know here that's not the case. So so there must be a gap. And uh, so measuring there 70 mil. That sounds about right actually because you'd have a um, some sort of track system like a just a channel steel um, and uh, lightweight, very lightweight framing and uh, that would be uh, fixed to the slab and then the ceiling lining fixed to that. So often people if they don't know will put in a full ceiling structure with you know full joists when you don't need it. If it's something like this where it's just attached to a floor structure above you need a very simple um, structure to support your ceiling. So what other layers do you think we need then that we haven't made yet. What two things have we got then between the slab and what we can see? Oh yeah, we'll get onto the services later, but even before that, just, yeah, plasterboard, exactly, yep. Yeah. And then what's the other thing? Do you know what the supports for your ceiling are called? Yeah. Yeah, still framing, so you could just call it battens here or something like that, would be okay. Uh, so, I'm just going to go and make some layers for those. So, 
got to think about all these elements as you're detailing your interiors. So a ceiling, um, we could just call it plasterboard. And then the other one, a ceiling, let's call it frame. Okay, so plasterboard. Um, there is a standard colour for it, but I'm just going to make it something that will stand out visually. And I'll try and make it a fairly thick layer. Same with the frame, but not too thick because we're going to have a little bit of detail there. And. Okay, so I'll, oh, so actually I'll offset the uh, the line there just to get a ceiling thickness. Do you know the, the standard thickness of ceiling lining? Ten mil is pretty standard. Uh, you can get thinner these days, but um, but ten mil is okay. I think Super Seal, which is a standard ceiling lining product from CSR, so. Yeah, I oh, know. Not no, no. It shouldn't be more than ten. Yeah, no. So wall lining can be can be th um, thicker, but um, so yeah, Jipfock, um have, which is CSR basically, they have uh, these standard um, panel types for for ceilings, which are usually a bit thinner than the ones for walls and um, just behave a bit differently. So just let's just check the. Yeah, so 10 mil basically is standard for those. Alrighty, so 10 mil, gonna offset. Put this on our layer for ceiling lining. And then for your battens, uh, Okay, so we've got, I think, was it uh, 60 mil left over, which is not really a standard size, but we'll just say that's that's what it is. And so maybe, yeah, we'll just make them 50, 60 by 50. They'll probably be 35 or something, but let's just make it 50. So uh, if you're going to change it, you'll just take them out anyway. So, so here we'll offset uh, 50 mil. So I'm going to show these in a very diagrammatic way. If you're doing it properly, you might show them as a, a profile. So you'd actually research the profile and... Exactly. Yeah, and they have little channels and other things in it that you should draw. But, uh, but here, I'm just going to keep it simple and use lines and just draw a symbol. So we've got the frame layer. Oh, now I should make that a different colour. So blue for metal is pretty typical. Let's make it a bit lighter so you can see it on the screen. And then we need another layer. For the, um, essentially for the hatch. So I didn't, what sort of pattern or, or indication, oh that's, that colour's terrible, but what do you think you should have to show the, um, the inside of that frame? And I'll let you have a break after this, but I just want to finish this off. So that's still not showing up properly on the projector, I'll just make it a bit lighter. Yeah, so what hatch, would you have a hatch for this? Or? Exactly, just a cross, yeah. Anything like this, that's all you do, so that's good. And uh, yeah, so I'll just draw a couple of lines. And then. No, no. And then, um, what sort of spacing do you think you might have? 
a bit too much. Yeah, 1.2, you can do 600 is the minimum in, um, in this direction anyway. It could be 1.2 the other way, but six, yeah, 600 is the minimum. Um, these days, 450 is even better. So I'd say this might even be 600 because it was done a fair while ago, but they're trying to go to 450 for everything these days. It just gives a nicer finish. So uh, I'm going to make it 450. Might not be, but let's just make it that. Now I can just copy the line across. Now at that point you might think about making it into a block. So, and I might show you that because you may be not used to making blocks for everything. So you should be starting to do that. So to make this into a block it's really easy. Now I can just select it. If you wanted to you could draw lines above and below, but chances are this is going to be um, always in a similar position with something above and below that's got a heavier line weight. And and with blocks, hopefully you realise that you can always go back and edit them anyway if you need to make changes. So I'm just going to make this, uh, what I've got here, into a block. So the easy way, this is a good method to remember, select it first, then type B and enter, and then give your block name. So I'm just going to call this Batten. Uh, 50 by 60. Go to pick point and choose an insertion point. It's really important to remember that. And then click OK. So to force yourself to remember those steps, it's good to remember that a block always needs three things. It needs a name, needs an insertion point, and it needs objects. And I chose the objects first, so that's done. I can see here, four objects selected. So I'm going to click OK. And now, if I ever need to use that again, I can go to Insert. And there it is. So you can see I've been making blocks for a lot of the other things I've done. And then this one I can copy across. Um, it's already a block, so if I copy it, it will still be a block. So this way, if I decide that I do want to show channels or something else later, I can easily just go and update that block and everything's going to change. So coming across 450, I can just keep copying it like that. Or a good trick once you've got a couple done, is to copy them using the previous one to get your base point. And then you can just come along, click like this to set them out automatically at the same distance. Alright, so obviously the floor will extend across and you can just use stretch maybe to bring that over. Okay, so then we have the, um, the brick wall here. Like I said, it's probably inside the beam. I'll have to double check that, but for now I'll just say that the beam there is sitting inside that, that brickwork. So I'm going to finish that there. just so I can make a start on the door and then I'll let you continue on with this. Alright, so you've worked out the door height, which somewhere you've measured. Okay, no. Do you remember measuring? You must have measured the door. Doesn't seem like it's shown. That's pretty bad. Okay, so we'll have to uh, do that again. Okay, so it looks like you measured everything but the important things when you were measuring. So yeah, just try and think about what you're going to be drawing when you're measuring. Yeah, don't think any, anyone's measured the door either door height. So you need to check that. Let's just, okay, so we'll assume it's 2100 for now. Um, it won't be in reality, so you need to check that. 
And, uh, yeah, we got the bulkhead there, so at least that'll give us an indication. Alrighty, so, um, well, look, I'll let you do, I'll let you put the door in and work that out once you've taken your measurements. Um, so that's how you can start doing your section. It shouldn't take you long to get a fairly detailed section showing, particularly focusing on the structure, but also all the interior linings. And make sure you're setting things out from the correct points. Then when you go to do your next section, you can simply copy this external reference across to the right, probably. It's up to you. Could go to the left. And then rotate it. Which way are we going? Yep, that way. And the section line uh, will be in a different place anyway, so you just need to again indicate where your section is cutting through. I'd probably go through, well, we're going to be removing this wall anyway, the, uh, sorry, not the wall, the, the windows there, so it's not so important to pick that up. So you can take your section to anywhere and um, project off in the same way. But uh, maybe just to, to make it clear why I think this is a really useful way of doing sections or a really um, efficient way. Once I've got a couple of lines from my walls, I can just project straight across from these these lines here, or I'll show you a really good trick. Copy them. Copy them across there, and I've got a lot of my heights already set up for this section, so that'll save you a lot of time. And that's why it's worth doing a fair bit of detail, getting most of your heights worked out on the first section, and then you should be able to copy a lot of that line work across into your second section and then just continue projecting up to that plan and working out at the junctions for this new section. Okay, so don't forget the columns as well, we need to show those and uh, they'll be a really important thing to show in the section to give an idea of the structure. But uh, like I said, I'll let you continue on with that, have a break when you're ready as well.